All right, I want to review the muscles of the face with you. I have another face muscle video on YouTube already, but we just got this model in and it shows some really good muscles on here that we can't see on the other one. So right off the bat, you see the frontalis. We can either call that muscle the frontalis or we can call it the frontal belly of the epicranius. So you'll hear two different words. You'll hear epicranius and you'll hear occipitofrontalis. On the back, over the occipital bone, is the other belly. So we could either call that the occipitalis or we could call it the occipital belly of the frontalis. And then those two muscles, the occipitalis and the frontalis, are connected by this broad connective tissue sheath. We call that the gala aponeurotica. So that looks pretty similar to our other models. We come up here to the front, we have our two orbital muscles, if you will. So we have the orbicularis oculi, right, which will help blink with contraction. And then around the mouth, we have the orbicularis oris. So those are pretty straightforward. On our other, the other muscle video that I posted, we could not differentiate between the two zygomaticus muscles. On this new guy, though, we can see nice and clear the zygomaticus major. That's the inferior one and slightly lateral. When that contracts, it's going to draw the angle of the mouth upward. And then medial to that is the smaller zygomaticus minor. And you'll notice that goes over more to the lip, where the major goes over more to the angle of the mouth. So when that contracts, it'll draw the superior lip upward. On our other model, the two muscles look close together, and it's hard to differentiate which is which. This theme of the major on the bottom and the minor on the top that's going to carry through to other parts of the body. Your rhomboid major will be on the bottom, rhomboid minor on the top, teres major on the bottom, teres minor on the top. So we're going to see that theme continue. Underneath the zygomaticus minor, I see the muscle and the fibers are oriented in this direction. So it's coming from underneath the orbit and it's inserting into the upper lip. If I look on the left side of the model, the superficial muscles are removed and I can see now real clearly the levator labii superioris. Okay? Back to the right side of his head, the levator labii superioris is this deeper one, and you'll notice that there's one that runs right up the side of the nose. That one's not on our list, so you don't really have to worry about identifying it, but I want to make sure you don't confuse it with the other. This also lifts the lip, but it's next to the ala of the nose, and that's what they call that, the levator labii superioris aliqua nasi. So at least you don't have to spell that one, right? So zygomaticus minor, zygomaticus major, and then deep is the levator labii superioris. When I come to the angle of my mouth, I find the orbicularis oris, and I go right to the angle. There's a muscle that goes straight backward, almost like a handlebar mustache would come off the corner of the mouth. That's your risorius. So when the risorius contracts, it's going to draw the angle of the mouth laterally as if you were smiling. While I'm over here, I have this triangular muscle coming off the mandible, going up into the angle of the mouth. That's your depressor anguli oris. And if I go just medial to that, I can see the fibers on this muscle that are going not to the angle of the mouth, but to the bottom lip. And that's your depressor labii inferioris. I have my parotid gland, which we'll talk about next semester in AMP2. And then I find the duct for that parotid gland crossing this muscle, coming off the zygomatic arch and inserting into the angle of the mandible. That is the masseter muscle. It's one of the two major muscles that we have of mastication. The other one, I'll flip it around and show you on the left side, originates off the temporal bone and part of the parietal, but mostly temporal. It's going to work its way down also to insert into the mandible, and that's your temporalis. So together, the temporalis and the masseter are going to be responsible for elevating the jaw. If I go back, and I find the parotid duct, and I go deep, you'll see some fibers in there that are deep to the risorius and they're deep to the zygomaticus major. That muscle is the main muscle of the cheek, and they call it either the buccinator or the buccinator. I've heard it pronounced both ways. If we go over to the left side of the model, all that superficial uh, uh, musculature is removed, and I can see the buccinator really nice in there.